Thank you. Thank you, President. Thank you, Congress. Thank you, Prime Minister. Welcome to our town. Thank you. This is the first question of the day. Unison is usually supportive for labor commitment to national care service and pay, fair pay agreement for care workers. Social care has suffered terribly for the past 14 years under the Tory. And tackling it, the crisis begins with the workforce. We know very well that far-reaching reform cannot happen overnight. But can the Prime Minister reassess labor long-term commitment to a national care service and getting a fair agreement up and running a bit quicker? Because care worker and support worker, they are suffering up and down the country, including in this room. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Julia. Our second question is from David, who's a Unite Executive Council member who works in the health sector. David. Thank you, Congress. Thank you, Mr. President. Prime Minister, it's great to be here. I'm pleased to see a uh, Labour Prime Minister in this hall. Thank, Thank you. you. As our General Secretary, Sharon Graham said yesterday, um, I'm sure you heard her great speech. As she said, rates of investment in British industry are the lowest in the G7, and other countries have much more money set aside for future investment. If we don't in start investing much more in industry now, how can we ensure Britain gets the good quality jobs we need workers to transition into, and especially our green jobs and the still works that we all want. Thank you very much, Prime Minister. Thanks, thanks, uh, David. And our third and final question in, the, in this section is from Sonia, who's a uh, branch secretary for school support staff at the GMB. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Congress, and welcome, Care. Thank you. And Labour's commitment to reinstate the, court, the school support staff negotiating body is incredibly welcome. We'd like to know, does the government agree it's time to recognise the pivotal role played by school support staff and end the scandal of term time only contracts? Uh, thank, you. thank you, colleagues, for those questions. Let me take them in turn. Firstly, Julia, in relation to care and the care service. As I think I've said to this Congress before, um, uh, I know about this. My sister is a care worker. I know just how difficult it is, how fragile the working conditions are, and it's hugely important that we make that commitment, as we have done and as we do, to a national care service. That is one of the absolute objectives of this government to create that national care service. And it does, of course, start with the staff. It doesn't end with the staff, but it starts with the staff. Because you will know um, across um, your unions, across your members, um, just how fractured the working conditions are. And that's the reason, amongst others, that so many leave care to go and work in other sectors because they want a framework that is better for them. So it starts with the staff um, and the fair pay agreement. It will be the first of its kind uh, that we will be bringing through. And we've deliberately chosen the care sector because we think it's the sector that most needs it. So that's the foundational stone, if you like, of the National Care Service. But we made a commitment to this. We'll stick to that commitment. We will see this through. And we look forward to working with you, Christina and others, to deliver on this really important commitment. Uh, David, on investment, you, you, you hit the nail on the head in one of the major failings of the last 14 years, which is we haven't had enough investment in to this country, to our economy, to the businesses in which your members work. And this matters hugely. Um, whenever I ask 
uh, investors why they haven't put the money into the United Kingdom in recent years. They tell me it's because of the chaos of the last 14 years, particularly the recent years, with chopping and changing Prime Minister's Chancellor's strategies. That is not to create the conditions for investment. The way to create the conditions for investment is economic stability, real clarity and strategy about where we're going as a government, whether it's on clean power 2030 or other strategic decisions, so we can get that investment in, make sure uh, that we get the growth that we need, and growth in every part of the country. And just on growth, because it's so important, yes, we want economic growth, your members want economic growth. We want wages to go up. We want living conditions to improve. We want to have public services to be better. And we need it across the whole of the country. And that's why I said what I said about redistribution. I don't want a model that says growth is only for some parts of the country and redistribution is the answer for other parts of the country. We've got to have the commitment, the determination to make sure that investment brings growth across all parts of our country. Uh, and that's why we set up the National Wealth Fund. That's why the industrial strategy is so important um, and great British energy to, to make sure that we get that investment in. So thank you, David, for that question. And then Sonia on school support staff and the negotiating body. It's really important that we've reinstated the negotiating body because I want every single child, wherever they come from, whatever their background, to have the best education they can possibly have. And that is down to our teachers and our support staff who do an incredible job in difficult circumstances. And we owe them not just a negotiating body, but our respect. Um, and it is that, in that spirit that we will work with them um, to deliver uh, the first-class education that every child uh, absolutely is entitled to in this country. So thank you, Sonia, for work raising that really important issue. Thanks, Paul. Th thanks, Prime Minister. Our fourth question, and we're going over to the other side of the hall, is from Helen, who works in defence and is president of Prospect's defence sector. Helen? Thank you. Um, Prospect's recent survey of women in civilian roles in the Ministry of Defence found that, shockingly, over 60% have experienced or witnessed sexual harassment at work. What will the government do to make the defence industry and workplaces safe for women? Uh, thanks, Helen. Uh, the next question is from Alan, who's the National President of the Educational Institute of Scotland and a Principal Teacher of English. Alan? Good morning, Prime Minister. The UK is one of the richest countries in the world, but poverty is wrecking the lives of more than a quarter of our children. The two-child benefit cap, punitively introduced by the last government, is a driver of poverty among larger families and is negatively impacting the lives of 1.6 million children. Controversially, your government has not scrapped the two-child benefit cap. What alternative urgent measures are you therefore taking to immediately alleviate the poverty experienced by 4.3 million children across the UK? Oh, okay. Thanks, Alan. And our, our sixth and final question is from Jane, who's a retail worker from North Wales and who's also president of Usdor. Thanks Jane. for that, Paul. Morning, Prime Minister. Um, I work in retail, and increasing levels of violence, threats, and abuse are a massive concern for me and for my colleagues. Labour's welcome commitment to introduce a specific offence of assaulting a retail worker will send out a clear message that this government takes retail crime seriously. What more will your government do to help us feel safe at work? Thank you very much, colleagues. Uh, Helen, let me start with the question of sexual harassment, because uh, that figure of 60% is shocking, I think, um, for any of us to hear. Um, and it's not just in defence. It'll be across all other sectors in the public and private, sexual harassment at work is never, ever acceptable, and we have to take measures to grapple with it. And that's why I'm really pleased that in the New Deal legislation, there will be stronger protection in relation to sexual harassment. That's much needed and can't come quick enough, so far as I'm concerned. I think we have to have a wider 
uh, mission here as well, because whether it's in the workplace or elsewhere, sexual harassment, violence against women and girls, is unacceptable in all its forms and all its places. Um, and that's why, within the missions that we've set out for government, I've made violence against women and girls central uh, to that, because I'm determined that we, together with you and others, will fight this. It's been talked about for far too long. It's time now for action. I'm really pleased that now we're in power, we can actually act uh, rather than talk about this. So thank you very much for raising that. Uh, Alan, thank you for raising um, the question of child poverty. It is a really important issue, as you know, as the whole of Congress knows, and it matters to this government. Obviously, we've had to take difficult decisions, given the economic circumstances we're in, for reasons that I have explained. But that does not diminish, to answer your question directly, our absolute determination in relation to child poverty. It's far too high. It is our responsibility to bring it down. We've already, obviously, set up a task force but that has to get to the underlying causes as well. This isn't an issue that can be solved just by one adjustment in welfare, frankly. It's about housing, it's about education, it's about wages, it's about conditions in which people live, health, mental health. All of that has to be addressed, and we are determined to address it and are already addressing it, because just as the last Labour government brought child poverty right down. So will this government. We'll work with you and others and everybody in the room to make sure that we make good on that commitment because it is so important to us um, and we'll work with you on it. So thank you, Alan, for raising it. And Jane, on the question of uh, offences against retail workers, I mean, this truly is shocking. And I know you've raised it a number of times. Osdor's obviously had a very important campaign on it. Paddy Lillis raises it with me pretty well every time we meet, and rightly so. And it, I mean, where I, I went to Warrington to the Iceland store there to talk to the staff, and it was the first thing that they spoke to me about. I went to Swindon uh, to the Morrison's shop there, and we had um, an extended session, and the number one issue for them was the abuse that they were uh, coming under, uh, sometimes in relation to shoplifting, which is prevalent, as you know, but also more generally. Um, and, and then in Southampton, which were smaller shops, but still it was the same issue over and over again. It's not acceptable. It can't be acceptable in any circumstances. It is demoralizing for the workforce um, in every single way. And that's why I'm really pleased that we can introduce an offense to deal with it. But we have to go further than that. We can't have a situation where shoplifters can walk in, um, shoplift, and walk back out again, and nobody can do anything about it. We're going to turn that, change that, work with you. This has to be a specific uplifted offence. We have to take it seriously. Um, and I'm not wanting to hear again from those that are on the front line about the appalling attacks and insults that they are subjected to. It's everywhere across the country. It is really hard for the workforce to take. You have rightly championed it uh, as a cause. We join you in that cause, and we'll do something about it, working with you and other trade unions. Such an important issue. Thank you so much, Congress, for having me.